Okay, so the work is four questions and a turnaround that we put up against something we believe to be true that is causing stress in our lives. I came to see that a mind unquestioned is the world of suffering. Can you hear that? A mind unquestioned is the world of suffering. If we questioned our stressful thoughts, those thoughts that make us so angry that we would hurt another human being, if we questioned them, there's no way you can have the anger. And what is left in its place is clear thinking and clear ways of doing it a different way. A way that works. Because anger is, it's, um, well, I don't have to tell you about anger. I don't have to tell me about anger. I was so full of rage that often my children were afraid of me. And I was in a place that it, it was as though there was no way out for me. And I thought you had to die a physical death to escape the hell that I was living in. No one told me there was another way. I didn't have a religion. I was lost. I didn't have, I didn't have a therapist. I just was stuck in this, in this mind. So one day I was lying on a floor because I hated myself. I was, I was so full of self-hatred and guilt, I didn't believe I deserved a bed. So I would sleep just curled up on the floor. That was my jail. So one day I opened my eyes, a cockroach crawled over my foot, and I opened my eyes, and in place of all that darkness that I had spent all those years was an experience that I cannot describe to you. You know, I would say, I would say connected. I was connected. It was amazing. So I saw in that moment that when I believed my thoughts, I suffered, and so did my family. But when I questioned my thoughts, I didn't suffer. And my family was free of this rage that I was free of and this crazy, crazy mind. So what I invite you to do today is put your resentments on paper. And these paper, this paper, it's yours. No one's going to collect them. This is yours. Don't put your names on it. You know, this is personal work. It's your private property. You can do what you want with it. Tear it up. Doesn't matter. And no one knows who it belongs to. That's up to you. But I invite you to fill it in, short, simple sentences, and just go through your life, the people re you resent. Maybe it's someone here. Maybe it's someone in the system. Maybe it's someone in your family. Maybe it's someone from your past. Maybe you were five years old. Maybe it was something on your way to this room. You might just think of a name, someone in your life, and, the, and then just find the resentment, write it down. Okay? So let's begin. And you know, I like to say this is the day the ego has been waiting for. You know how you try to shut it down and try to stop it and it keeps you awake at night? You know, that's why we drink. That's why we drug. We don't know what to do with this, this mind of ours. You know, no one, no one would mind being alone. Like you could, you could, put me in a room forever and if I loved what I thought I wouldn't have a problem if I understood what I thought but people don't want to be alone because they're stuck with their thinking they're stuck with their heads so it's a terrifying place and we think it's the room we're in or we think it's the place where we're at when actually it's just this that is so terrifying so that's what I'm doing here today you know just, uh, we're just going to look at what we think and um, see what this hell is that we live in some time and the reason for it. So continue to fill out the sheet. Just let the, let the mind just fly out of its straitjacket, out of its jail. Keep the mind in jail because we don't know what to do with it. 
and this work is moving all over the world, people are getting free of their minds. Who would volunteer to read what they've written? Yes. I resent my brother because he bites the hand that feeds him and lies to and deceives his family because of drugs. Is that familiar? What I learned is that there are no new stressful thoughts. There was a moment when I noticed on that floor that thoughts were just coming. I didn't invite them in. They just come. They just come. And I was treating them like an enemy. But I've had that thought too. My brother was a drug addict. My daughter, an alcoholic. And my history is um, right in there. Okay. Anyone else who would volunteer to read what they've written? I resent my father because his only presence was abusive. I resent my mother because she wasn't strong and fell to addiction. I resent myself because I haven't been able to be myself without escaping. And I resent my wife because she says one thing and means another. Yes. Thank you. So is, were there any new thoughts there? Have you had thoughts like those? Are they familiar? So no new thoughts. So we have been stuck in this thinking with no way out except to resent, to hate, to be angry at, to divorce them, to leave them, to end up in jail. Anyone else volunteer? Thank you. I resent people who make decisions in my life that I have no control over without really bothering to find out who I am. Yeah. Is there anything else written down? It's just the same stuff that <laughs> my wife is lying and cheating on me. Yes, so my wife lies and cheats on me. So continue to read your list. Um, I resent my parents because I feel that they abandoned me at a young age. Yes. Um, I, I resent the system a lot because it's not very compassionate. People aren't compassionate a lot of times. Very caught up in themselves. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so would you come up here with me for a moment? Oh, We're going to look at the four questions, okay? What's your first name? Scott. So on the other side of this one, watch the four questions. Okay? And the turnaround. So, so follow Scott. So you be the facilitator and I'll be your client. Okay? Or we'll be friends. Whatever it is. But you're the facilitator. You facilitate me. Okay. So people are not compassionate. That's what I believe. Okay. Okay. And I don't believe it any longer. But, oh my, I spent 43 years believing that one. I believe it. Yeah. So, people are not compassionate. Now, you asked me the four questions. Do you know that? Oh, is it true? Yes. Because that's where I used to come from. Can you absolutely know that it's true? Can I absolutely know that people are compassionate, are not compassionate? I can't absolutely know because I can't know their minds or where they're coming from. I can't know. I absolutely can't know their heart. I can't know their minds, so I have to answer no to this. And at the time when, I, when this work came to me, it was I didn't want that answer. But I had to go in because when I go out, there's war. And I end up in my own jail. So I had to go in and answer for myself. It's like you go into that connection. There's a mind in there that comes from the heart and it's connected. And if you let that answer, let that answer the questions, it's an amazing experience. I call it the heart mind. You know, there are two polarities of mind. The one that says, it's a terrible world, and then there's a heart mind in there that's the other polarity. And if we ask it, and that's what these questions are about, if we ask it, this heart mind, and allow it to answer, it will answer. So I've looked at this, and I have to say, no, I can't know 
even if another person wipes me out, I can't know their heart. So how do you react when you have that thought? Every time they give me something, I'm suspicious. I never really believe them. I'm even paranoid. I'm always watching my back. When they tell me they care, I don't ever believe them. I separate from them. I put a wall between us. I don't trust anyone. And I become a terrible listener. I can't hear my fellow human beings. It feels, when I, when I think that thought and I believe it, it feels unkind. And I feel guilty over that. Basically lost. Uh, who would you be without that thought? That people are not compassionate. I'd feel compassion for them when they're doing the things I used to do. I'd be able to really listen. I wouldn't be so lost. Basically, I would just trust everyone is telling their own truth. And I would be present with my own, whatever that would be. And I'd live a much safer life that way. I'd have my own guidance. So then if you take me to the turnarounds. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, I'm not sure how to do this. Turn the thought around about your judgments on that or yes. on each question? Or? People are not compassionate. See, that's, okay, that's the statement the that you that, wrote. Okay, uh -huh. yep. And the turnaround on that would be? I am not compassionate. Yes, especially toward those people that I think are not compassionate. By passing a judgment on them, that's uh, compassion itself. Yeah. It's like in the moment I see you're not compassionate, I've lost my compassion. I am what I call you in the moment. Another turnaround. People are compassionate. You know, that could be in their hearts. We're all compassionate. What if, what if your experience with somebody has been that they're not compassionate? I mean, I, I understand that the concept of trusting, you can only trust somebody to be who they are. That's the only, way, the only thing you can trust another person. Yes. And, and how, if your experience with that person is that they're not a compassionate person, that they're very spiteful and mean. Well, I can't, I can't go there after I question this because they may not look compassionate in the moment. But who am I to judge? Am I compassionate in the moment? I can't change other human beings, but I can work on my own compassion. If I think they should be compassionate, let's let one human being be compassionate in the world, and that would be me. It would be the one that believes in that. And then when I see how difficult that is, I'm much more compassionate when I see people who are not compassionate in the moment. I believe everyone is. They're just stuck in concepts that they haven't questioned yet. It's ignorance. We haven't educated ourselves. We believe what we think. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for walking me through that. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay, did you follow it? Did you follow it? So let's take a moment out to write other resentments so that you can start noticing as you go, is it true? Would you like to see another one done? Okay, so let's take a look at it. I resent my father because his only presence was abusive. Is that true? Yes, that's true. Now, Go in. Be introspective. That's what you've believed probably all your life. That's true also. Yeah. So he was, read it again. I resent my father because his only presence was abusive. His only presence was abusive. Now close your eyes. Now find one place in your life that you can see where he was not abusive one time and I invite you all to do that someone you think was just entirely abusive see if you can find one place
Did you find it? I found one. All right. <laughs> Your father was entirely abusive. Is that true? No, it's not. Not if I uh, go with the one time that he wasn't. Well, that seems to be the way of it. That's the truth of it. And the mind believes everything it thinks. How do you react? And I'm coming from your, your questions there. How do you react when you think that thought and you believe it? He was, and I'm going to shorten it, he was only abusive. That just makes me feel lousy. And how did you treat your father when you believed that he was only abusive? I spent my whole childhood in fear. And how did you treat him? How did you, what ways did you get even that you knew would hurt him, upset him, prove him wrong? Oh, I acted out. You acted out. And who did you hurt? I was hoping to hurt him. And but, who did uh, you hurt? I hurt myself. Yes. So does that thought bring peace or stress into your life? My father was only abusive. Bring stress. So who would you be without this thought? Who would you be without this? Now we know it's a lie. He wasn't only abusive. Who would you be without this lie in your life? I'd be more peaceful, more at ease. So let's turn it around. My father was only abusive. My father was not only abusive. Isn't that truer? That's truer. Read it the way you wrote it. My, my father was... My fa I resent my father because his only presence was abusive. Okay, now turn it around. I resent myself because I... I resent myself because I was only abusive towards my father. That one's hard to swallow. What are you experiencing? Confusion. See, here's what happens. We, our nature is to love and care. And you love your father, no matter how abusive he is or was, and there's nothing you can do about it. So these lies, these thoughts that we haven't questioned keep us from that experience. So we get really confused when love begins to replace hate and resentment. So this work is very dangerous. You can lose your identity as I am the man who hates my father or resents my father. And that's all that happens. It makes you a kinder human being and in that a more intelligent human being because there's less to worry about and the mind is clearer about what it thinks and what it sees and what it knows to be true. So sit with it. This is a lot. From one sentence, yes, it's mushroomed into quite a bit. Yeah. Yes. You begin to meet yourself. You begin to meet your kinder nature. And that is God-connected. That's it's a connection, a real connection. Thank you for your courage. Thank you. You're welcome. Who would volunteer to read what they've written? Thank you. I resent my father-in-law because he introduced me to heroin. So, turn it around. I resent myself because I introduced myself to heroin. Isn't that as true? Yeah. Yeah, you introduced yourself to heroin. Right. He didn't hold you down and shoot you up. No, he didn't. No. no. You introduced you to heroin. So your father-in-law introduced you to heroin. How do you react when you think that thought and you believe it? I don't really care for it too much. Yeah, he becomes your enemy and it's his fault you're here. Actually, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we've got, if, if I think you are my problem, I'm insane. I have to be 100% responsible for what I think and where I am and what I am because until, I'm, until I really get that, there's no hope for me. It means there's an enemy out there and I'm in deep trouble. 
people, people are dangerous. That's what we believe. But no, he did heroin. You know, you were hanging out there. You introduced you to it. No one made you do it. You did that. So who would you be without the thought, he introduced me to heroin? I honestly really don't know because I dwell on it a lot. Yeah. It's his fault I'm in here. Pretty much. Yeah, so I would turn that around. It's my fault that I'm in here. Yeah. You're the one that introduced you to heroin. What are you experiencing? Uh, something different. I don't really know what it is. Yeah. Something. It's been a long time since I really thought about anything about myself. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're so busy focusing on other people and what they did to us, we never take responsibility for ourselves. And we all would if we could, if we knew how. And that's what this work is about. And this work, it's flying through the world because it's, it's the way out. It's the way out. The way in is the way out. Okay, sweetheart. So um, who would you be without that that story. Someone who could, it was your father-in-law? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, someone who could meet their father-in-law without resentment. Right. Someone who could even write him a letter and say, you know, everything I did to you and everything I said about you and thought about you, I was off base. I probably maybe should do something like that. You know, you realized that you're the one that introduced you to it. And I'm talking real introduction here. He didn't do that. You did. So that realization, once you live it and you do make that amend, it's radical. It's, it's like realization lived and you just get bigger and bigger and bigger. It's, it's like being just God lit. It's amazing. And the clarity that comes with that. You know, when the light bulb goes on, you have hit truth. And there's nothing sweeter than that. I get to travel the world and watch these light bulbs go on everywhere. And then when I come back the next time, I get to see what people are like when they've turned on their own light bulbs, which is what you've done here today yourself anyway. Thank you. Welcome. So let's look at the next one. Um... I resent my cousin because he never got into trouble for the same things that I've done. Is that true? I believe it is. Yeah, so see if you can find the place where you, where you got in trouble and he got in trouble for the same thing. I have one. You have one? Yeah. Very good. So now, is it true? What you believed? You just wiped it out. He did get in trouble for the same things that you got in trouble for. Just not all of them. Yeah, I guess. You know, what's happening here is he's blowing his own mind. He is blowing his own mind. He is working himself out of hell. You know, this is your opportunity where you don't have to make a living, support your family. You, you can just sit back. This is an opportunity for you to get well for you to go in and work your way out of hell so that you can be prepared for what you deserve, which is a really good life. What's the next one? Um, I resent my girlfriend because she doesn't have the dependency problems that I have. So you resent, resent her for that. Is that true? Not really, but no. I mean it is in a way. So is it true right now in this moment you resent her? No. No. And how do you react when you think that thought? It kind of hurts. Yeah. So who would you be without this, this thought, I resent her? I really don't know. And she doesn't have a dependency problem, is that true? Yeah, it is true that she doesn't have a dependency problem. Oh, really? Does she love you? I, as far as I know. I, I, I yeah, well, she, she could be a little dependent on you. That's and true. And you could be, you know, a dependency problem. If you're a problem and she's dependent on you... <laughs> She could have a dependency problem. <laughs> so let's look at the next one. I resent the system because they gave me a sentence for having a drug problem. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's turn it around. <laughs> <laughs> I resent myself because I got arrested for having a drug problem. 
Yeah. Did you know it was against the law when you did that? Yeah, I did. Okay, so, you know, life's just doing its job. Just doing its job. But if I, if I am in here for breaking the law, I did it. It's not a right or wrong. It's just that I did it. So I have, you know, do the crime, pay the time. Thank you, precious. You're welcome. Nice work. Thank so you. So you know where to go when you have a problem. Put it on paper and question it. And the reason I say put it on paper is it gives you a chance to let these questions live inside of you. So would you volunteer to, to read what you've written? I was saying my daughter because, she's, because she quit high school and moved out, moved out of the house. Yes. So continue to read. I need my daughter to go back to school. I want her to move back home and listen, listen more to her mother. Okay. Now, the world would tell you you're right, and you believe you're right. So you need your daughter to go back to school. Is that true? Is that what you need? No, I believe it's true. Yes. So you need your daughter to go back to school. This would be the best thing for her path. Can you absolutely know that that's true? I really don't know what, what other facts makes her do what she's doing, but... So how do you react when you think the thought, I need her to go back to school, and she does not? In fact, she leaves home. I'd be um, kind of frustrated, angry, mad at myself. Yes, frustrated, angry, mad at yourself, and sadness. Yeah. Yeah. So who would you be without this thought, I need my daughter to go back to school? I'd be more, more at ease, yes. more peaceful. You see, for me, to argue with reality is to argue with God. And I lose every time 100%. I can't know what's best for another human being. But there's one I can know what's best for, sometimes. So let's turn it around and see what that would be. I need, I need um, myself to go back to school. Feel that. Experience it. Go back to school. So tell me about that. What kind of education would you like to have? I'd like to go on to um, counseling. Yes. So go back to school and counsel people. That's what you're, that's what you're doing here. You're getting experience so you can go out and help other people. You know who we can believe? Someone who's really walked it and lived it. That's what our path is about. Just like your daughter's path, maybe it's not school. But how is she going to respect education if you went back to school or if you didn't? I mean, if you want to teach her the value of school, how would you teach her that value? By going to school? or not going to school? I going to school? Yeah, she could really respect that and also see that it's possible to go back to school at any age and how solid that is and what you do with it. That's attractive. Rather than saying, go back to school, go back to school, listen to your mother. Please go back to school, it's for your own good. No, you go to school. And I love that you'd be a counselor because every time you counsel someone, you get to hear it. You, we expect our kids to, to stay out of trouble, our wives to be loyal, our children to get educations. Turn it around. Where's the example? And if we think it's so simple, walk it. Go back to school. Oh, yeah? You think it's simple? You walk it. You want your children to be happy. Oh, yeah? You think it's so easy? You do it. And we begin like children, you know. We don't know how to do it. And we expect them to. And then we shame them and we're so confused when they cannot. Okay, I, I, I had I put down on number three. Um, she, sh she, sh she, sh she shouldn't be hanging out so much, neither smoking. She should make a, an effort to come to see me 
and talk to me more often. Okay, so can you absolutely know that it's true? She should come see you more often. No, no. No. So how do you react when you think that thought? She should come see me more often, and she doesn't. I'd be mad at her. I'd be frustrated again. Yeah, and then we wonder why they don't come see us. We're mad and angry, and we're mad and frustrated at them. You know? They, they know. They know. They can see it. They come see us in that anger and frustration when she does come. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then we, you know, it's no surprise they don't come. But we would be different if we could. But because you believe she should see you more often, look who she meets when she does come. So does that thought bring peace or stress into your life here? Stress, a lot of stress. Who would you be without that thought? I need her to visit me more often. I'll be more, more peaceful and kind of more closer to her. Yes. That's the part I love about this work, closer to her. And how would you treat her when she does come to see you without the thought, she should come see me more? Oh, very friendly. Very yeah, very friendly. Uh, a loving father, <laughs> not a judging father. Yeah, even though it's subtle sometimes. And we have different ways of doing that. If we think the thought she should visit me more often, we can, there are all kinds of ways of punishing, even with our eyes and face. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So she should come visit me more often, turn it around? She shouldn't come see me more, more often. No, she should not come see me more often. How do I know that that's true? She doesn't visit me more often than she does. Mm -hmm. That's the way of it. There's a perfect world running here. And when I argue with it, I miss, I miss that visibility. And I also miss the presence of my daughter when she is there. There's another turnaround. Can you find it? I need, I need myself to come and see me more often. Yes. You need yourself to visit you more often. You're mentally in your daughter's business. Who she should see? You're running her life from jail. Yeah, you should come visit you more often. Like just feel where you're sitting in the chair and feel the support there. It's supporting you and feel how the ground supports you. And feel the breath that comes in and out and you do nothing for it. It's a gift. And the clothes, the texture of the clothes on your skin. And your beautiful glasses and your amazing face and health. It's a, it's a gift. But when I'm mentally in her business, I'm missing all of that. I'm in hell. Hell, yeah. You have her dead. You have her addicted. You have all of that in your mind. Oh, yeah. So you don't even know who your daughter is. Except dead, sick, worried. worried. Yeah. So your daughter should stop hanging out with those people. Turn it around. She should be hanging out with those people. That's her path. So can you find another turn around? I? I, I should be hanging out with those people. Yeah, I should not be hanging out with those I people. Should, yeah, yeah cuz mentally you have her worth with some interesting characters. So stop hanging out with those people. Come on back to your life here now and see what you can learn from where you are. It's a beautiful world where we are if we question what we believe. I think you have the hang of this. What do you think? Yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah. Welcome to the work, mm -hmm. to the work of you. You know, if your daughter lived the perfect life, it's not going to bring you happiness. You're just going to go to something else to worry about. Yeah. So ultimately, it began with you. It has to end with you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. So your father doesn't care about you. Is that true? Yeah, that's, I think that's true. Yeah. Because if he did, he would have, he know where I'm at. I talked to him a couple of times since I've been here. You know what I mean, and he hasn't tried to ask to come see me or nothing. So. Yeah. So that means he doesn't care about you. He doesn't come see you, and that means he doesn't care about you. He doesn't care about you. Can you absolutely know that that's true? I think I can because, you know what I mean, like, I wrote him a while, a while ago, about, let's say, a half a year ago, 
and I wrote him like about like a couple months before my birthday, and then he never wrote me back. Yeah. Since then. And, and that means here. he doesn't care about you. Is it true? Yeah, he don't care about me, cause he would have wrote back. Oh really? Okay. Now here, the mind has a job. When it thinks a thought, its job is to prove that it's right. I call it the I know mind. So you think the thought, my father doesn't care about me, and then the mind begins to do its job, and its job is to prove it. He doesn't answer my letter. That proves it. He doesn't come to see me. That proves it. Can you know another person's mind or heart? No, but... Okay, now just watch how when you answer the question you moved into the but. So just when you're doing this work and you get the answer and you notice a but coming in, it's to keep you from really experiencing the answer. So just notice how does it feel inside of you when you think that thought, he doesn't care about me? I feel trash, you know, like, like I was just here for nothing, basically. Yeah. My mother, like, I grew, my mother raised me, that's what it is. Yeah. It's like if your father doesn't love you, you must be trash. That's what the mind will tell you. Yeah. So who would you be without the thought? Who would you be if you didn't believe that thought? My father doesn't love me. My father doesn't care about me. Well, right now I believe in I still I'm still the same person. I mean, I'm not sad about it, but I mean, I've grown up, so. Yes, and when you believe he doesn't care about you, there's an experience in there that's like sadness. Like there's something wrong with you. I heard from you. So let's turn it around. My father doesn't care about me. Turn it around. He does care about me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know. From, to me, I don't think he does because... Your mind just keeps doing its job. It tries to prove it, prove it, prove it, give you all the proof, and that's okay. But now let's do the same turnaround, only this time just experience it. My father doesn't care about me. I care about him. Oh, really? I, I do care about him, you know what I mean? But No, I don't know what you mean. I just can't. I, I told him before, you know what I mean? I told him, yeah, I love you, you know what I mean? He'll always be my father, but regardless of if he doesn't accept me, I mean, he does accept me, but not right to me, and I, and I still care for the guy. Yeah. Okay. So let's do that first turn of ground again. My father doesn't care about me. My father does care about me. Just feel that without your mind having to prove anything else. You know, you know, sweetheart, I cared about my children. And there were a couple of years there that I was just rarely out of bed where I could even cook for them. And I cared with all my heart. I was too, I was too full of drugs and unquestioned thoughts. I was nuts. And there's no way I could, they could think if you, if mom really cared about me, she'd be like other mothers. Well, I cared with all my heart and I still could not get out of that bed. And when they came into the room, all I could do is yell at them. So it was like, it felt like most of the time to me. But I cared about them with all my heart. That's why I always love asking the question, you know, if he doesn't care about you, can you know what's in his mind and heart? I couldn't get out of bed. Did you, were you ever in a position where you just couldn't change? No. Were you ever addicted to anything? Yeah. Um. Well, that's a place where you couldn't change at the time. Sure. Yeah. So, can you see another turnaround? My father doesn't care about me. That's all I can see because, I mean, like I said, I, I mean, I talked to him a couple of times. Are, but are you about to be right again? All right. Yeah. It, it's like, my life is to prove he doesn't care about me. All the thoughts are to prove he doesn't care about me. I'm right. But what if you just sat with it? 
and just opened your mind and your heart to it. The other turnaround that I noticed for myself was I don't care about. Me? So where are the ways you don't care about you? I was doubting. I mean, doubting people, which don't, which if I don't know if it's true or not, I'm always doubting. Yeah. Sounds like hell to me. <laughs> you know, only my, my mind is the only proof that my father doesn't care. And this mind you know, took me to some interesting places. And now that my mind is clear, it's taken me to some interesting places. It's just the opposite of the places I used to go. So any place you don't care about yourself, remember it's not your father's job, it's yours. And father yourself. That's your responsibility. Do you have children? I got a stepdaughter. So father her. Father her. And when you're here and you have the thought, I want my father to call me, I want him to visit, I want him to answer the letter, call her and mentally visit her and see her and think of ways that you can help and write her. Just it turn it around. Week. Good for you. That's a wonderful way. And when you see yourself not fathering you, just stop in your tracks and ask yourself, what can you do for you that's better than what you're doing? It's always a beginning. What's your name? Jason. Just privileged to meet you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you. So, anyone else volunteer to read what you've written? Good, good. I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. I'm having a... Um, because I'm listening to everything and I mm -hmm. think everything is good, but I'm just having a little trouble because you say to accept. That's mostly what we're talking mm -hmm. about today. Well, you know, what I've noticed is whether I accept it or not, sure. it happened. Okay. And then you said something about putting it past and oh. shut the door. Is it more or less like shut the door in your past? See, because my parents are still in my life and I'm, I'm very angry with them, even though I love them to death, yeah. because I'm saying I'm in jail because they should have been tougher on me. They let me get away with some things, and they also knew some things I think... Okay, so let's look at this. They should have been tougher on me. Right. Turn it around? I, I'm trying to turn it around, and I get slammed. You should have been tougher on you. Yeah, but as a child, as a child, as you're growing up... It's gone. You, well, it, you're right, but as you're growing up, you learn... You learn from social learning, from, your, yeah. from your, your, your behaviors at home, and so forth. Yeah. So now how can I adapt to something new and just turn around so quickly? I'm seeing things in a different way. Do you, do you understand what, what I mean? So here's how you begin now. You just begin now. It's that simple. You okay. know what the past is about? It's your best teacher. Okay, so you're saying just let's get rid of everything and just go forward now and, and, and never mind because I... Never mind about my past. Forget my past. Forget, you know, that my house, that the house my mother owns is blue, which I can't stand the color. Forget about it. Forget about my little dog because he bit me but when I was... But where do you hear me saying forget about the past? Well, I'm asking thought, you to even write it down. No, 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 no. I thought you said, I thought you, you were talking to, with Pedro here and you said something about the past. We have to let go of the past and go forward. No, that wasn't me. It's what you heard, though. Okay, it is what I heard. Mm -hmm. it, it is what I heard, so... Yeah. Okay. It's what you heard, and it's not what I said. Okay. Yeah. Nice question. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, everyone would forget about the past if they could. Sure. But, uh, you know, we can't. But we can question it and have a better now. We question the past, it gives us an incredible future. The past is our teacher. Right. So, yeah, let's remember it. Let's put it on paper. Let's question it and set ourselves free. Free from the past. That's well, not I, forgetting I, I about forgot, it. I forgot a lot about the past. I don't want to remember the past. Yeah. I what did you write? Um, I wrote about my parents, about that. I also I wrote down, before I got confused, about some things you were saying about uh -huh. accepting. About some things I, you were hearing. Well, <laughs> things, I was, things I was hearing. Uh -huh. um, I also wrote, but I'm, I'm going to go, because you said something about counseling, because I heard you say, if I'm right, 
-hmm. You said something about counseling. Well, that was his dream. That was, well, I'm going to go with what you're counseling, so I'm going to maybe you can counsel me on something. I was, I'm wondering because my daughter's mother, she's a, she's a, she's a beautiful lady. She's, she's a young lady, like 31, like myself. And in my time, I am, her, I am the father of the child. I, I was always there for my daughter. Drugs and alcohol, unfortunately, ripped me apart from her. Um, she knows who her daddy is. Um, and she's right now, I'm mad at her mother because her mother should explain to her more. So her mother about, should explain about what? About my, my disease with alcoholism, like mm -hmm. you should know, as you've been saying, that you've so been, my, you've had a problem. So her mother should explain more to her about this disease? Well, I would, I would think that she'd have a little more compassion. Her mother should be more compassionate and explain to her, turn it around, I... I should be more compassionate? And explain it to her. Well, this is the problem. Explain it to your daughter. Yeah, see, the problem is this. I can't speak to my daughter. I can't call there. Mm -hmm. that's, that's where I'm coming from. Well, there, well, there will come a time. All right. That's, and that'll be the right time. All right. But for now, you know, it's sure. not happening. Right. No, I, was, I wasn't debating with you about, what you're, about anything. I was just having, I'm, like I said, I'm asking a question because mm -hmm. I was having trouble. And my trouble more or less was, again, I can't see myself just shine off or... or of course not. Well, I'm just, I'm just afraid you're going to say that's what I'm hearing. So, <laughs> well, you may come out of this a, a really uh, focused listener. Well, I am. I'm trying my hardest. But um, it, it's hard. It's hard. You know what I mean? I'm having trouble with it because reality is reality. Yes. And, um, and, and that's what you said, and I th which I heard. Well, that's right. because it is. It, it, which it is. But it's hard. You, oh it, well, it doesn't it, wait I mean, for your approval. It doesn't no. wait for your vote. It doesn't. It just is what it is. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get mad tomorrow. I might get mad today. I have Good. resentments all over every, a lot of people here. So let's hear one. Rege um, like, I don't want to put. No, well, I can't say that. Oh I, really? I can't say that. Really? Well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, nothing, nothing to the extreme. Well, it doesn't have to be. You know, the smallest little resentment can just drive you nuts. It yeah. can ruin your day. Aren't you all going to 12-step programs? Is there anyone here that's not? You know what resentment does. It can take you right back out. These four steps can turn around. They're like steps 1 through 12. And they're so simple. If you really want to know the truth, if you really don't want to come back here again, if you really want to get out of here, you know, because this is what got you here in the first place. Anyone else want to volunteer to read what you've written? Good. I resent my ex because the beep bounced on me while I was locked up. Because? Because she left me while I was locked up. She left you? Yeah, while you were locked up. Okay, so this is a fun one to work with, guys. She left you, is that true? Yes. Okay, now do you ever have a picture of her in your mind? Can you have one right now? Yes. All right, she left you, is it true? Very good. I'd like to say no one can leave me. No one has that power. And I'll take you with me the rest of my life. I can see you. And I love that. It's such a gift. You know, we question what we believe, and we step into a, a world that we didn't think existed. It's like when someone comes to us, it can be the nicest visit rather than the visit from hell. <laughs> so how do you react when you think the thought, she left me, and she pays an occasional visit? I don't know. Resentment, sadness, anger. Anger. Yeah. So who would you be when you have a picture of her without the thought she left me? Probably a little nicer than I am now. Yeah. And oh my, is that what you're after? <laughs> you're going back to your true nature. You are just running that direction. That's what I did. 
She left me. Turn it around. I left her. Yeah. So tell you about that. What did you do just to make sure she would leave? Come to jail. Yeah. Yeah, you did that. So she's just a reflection of your thinking. So she left me. Can you find another turnaround? I left. Myself. Yeah. Because you go into her business and you mentally judge who she should be with, who she should live with, who she should love, like a dictator. When you love someone, you want them to be with, be where they need to be. That's how love is. Yeah. Sounds right. So you left you. How do you leave you? You mentally go into other people's business. And if you notice that that's a lonely thing to do, two of you over there, no one here for you. As soon as you notice mentally whose business you're in, it can just bring you right back to your own presence, a connected place where you can see and everything is clear and no one can take advantage of you and you know what to do. Yeah. Okay, angels, you know, I just, uh, I'm so grateful for a system that allows me to come in here and um, spend... Uh, little time with you and I love that through this work you, you learn to spend a little time with yourself and I love that when I leave here you have people to assist you and in the mornings you have it up on a wall even also when you get out of here everything I've got is free on the website and it can always be there for you you can just print it out and and done. Uh, Thank you for our time together. Thank you. It's fun.